All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our uh, special uh, meeting for the uh, budget we're going to go over this evening for uh, October 28, 2021 at 3 p.m. here at the Nicolau Fire Station. Thank you all for joining us. Um, Mr. Bridge will be filling in as our uh, clerk and counsel, so if you would call roll, please, sir. All right, uh, Councilman Grimm, Councilman Cobb, Councilman Cook, Mayor Lowry. Here. Uh, Councilwoman Nowakowski? Here. Councilwoman uh, Eagleston? Here. And then Councilman Rubel? Here. Okay, just for the record, we do have four present, but we will have uh, Ron, Mr. Cobb, and Mr. Cook uh, here shortly. Correct. And uh, depending on how long the meeting runs, Mr. Grimm may be here as well. Okay. Thank you, sir. And tonight's invocation will be done by Steve, Chief, 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 Steve Trusty. I apologize. Father, Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings. And we thank you for this council, Lord, and administration. We pray that you would guide us in your way to do the business of this city the way that you would have it be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. In the pledge. To the flag of the United States of America. To the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chief. Yep. Yep. All right, action on minutes, none. Communications, none. So, Andrew's report, none. Comments from members of the public. Reports none. Ordinances none. Business 2022 budget discussion. With that being said, I'll hand that over to Mr. Bridge and Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public, and uh, soon to be new council member in the back there. And of course, thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, we're here for our annual budget review. Uh, so these are just uh, some numbers we have put together to council to make a recommendation if they want to keep anything. Uh, this is the final steps of the budgetary process. Uh, before we go any further, I just want to give a big hats off to our finance director, Mr. Harris, who uh, knocked this out of the park a years ago. And uh, Mr. Miles, and 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 Mr. So since he is our finance director, he will be leading most of your meetings. Um, we, uh, just, just opinion, um, discussion area, the time cover right now. Um, we kind of want to do a different format. We kind of want to follow what we did last year instead of going line item by line item by line item by line item. Which is very boring. What we'll do is just kind of go through and do subcategories. If you guys have any questions on that, you can refer to the hard copy I gave you. Uh, but we also have an itemized list that how the actual appropriation budget will look. So we don't remember exactly what means price and So that's what we have to do. And then we have, of course, the line items in the big budget. Um, what we'll do is we'll just start with subcategories and we'll take it from there. Really, our budget is the same year in and year out. Um, just so you know, the only really major difference we have this year are the mayor court funds. So you'll see some, I don't know, what is it, 200, or 200, 200, or 200 level funds for the mayor court. But you'll also see um, probably in the fines and forfeitures on the general fund, you're going to see an increase in the revenue. Um, Prior to us having mayor's court, it was just for the speeding tickets that we got processed in county courts. But since we've been doing it ourselves, we're going to be a lot more revenue in that. So we keep that by line item as well. The really only other outlier that we're going to see in this year's budget is a $250 grant match out of the general fund. And that is for a $2 million project of how we're trying to get the grant money on. And that is a match for that. Right out of our water. Other than that, it's pretty much the same, same budget. So without further ado, we have one of the best finance directors uh, in the region that's coming from the auditor, so I'm going to let Ms. Harris take it over. It was also on the internet, too, I saw it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Facebook. Facebook. It was on Facebook. Oh, my yes. gosh, it has to be real. <laughs> <laughs> yay, 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 yay. Thank you, Mr. Bridge and Council, and anybody else that's with us tonight, um, Lindsay and our fire department. So, um, and just to get me warmed up and get get started this budget again we, we start out with the duplication of most of the funds from our 2021 and then we have historical and then we start back in probably May and June and we start tweaking the numbers for the 2021 and we have numerous meetings with our management 
staff on their individual budgets for their input. So we've spent a lot of time to try to get it as accurate. But as you know, to get a $7 million budget and you don't know everything that comes in. So a lot of these items that we're going to go through, just take it and it is a not too expensive amount. So anything under that is what we're hoping for, but we need these approvals to say not to exceed these line item dollar amounts. Your final vote. Um, the, um, and again, repairs and maintenance is probably one of the main things that we come back with supplementing. So I'm not concentrating on the revenue part. That's what we work with to make sure that our appropriations that we ask you to approve, we have the right revenue. We can go over that with questions, but I'm just going to start with what the voting part is, which is the appropriations and the expenditures. So are there any questions as we get started? Do you guys want to do a quick review of the revenues on the general fund, or are you going to go right to the Let's just, yeah, go ahead and do a brief over the general fund okay. before at the beginning. Okay. We're going to start here with the general fund and uh, property and income tax. And we're estimating a million two hundred fifty thousand eight dollars Then the next group is all our business governmental and franchise fees. $25. Um, these are our assessments, grass and weed, and public couple of uses. We're estimating $6,500. Zoning permits and uh, fees, along with this increase here, you can see is $25,000 for. That is where you the mayor's court money that we're estimating, not knowing on our first year how many cases it could be very low, it could be very high. We'll adjust it accordingly. That's $29,000. And then our cellular and shelter house rentals, they're kind of historically the same. We put 12 and 12 for both for a total of 24,000. Interest, I wish it was these older numbers back years ago, but we're anticipating about 3,000. So the other is a little yeah, bit of a mis- Oh, I'm sorry. Can you scroll back up to the uh, shelter house real quick? So this sure. is the revenue for the shelter house, right? That's our estimated for next year. Would that, would that, which, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter if you change it, but will we possibly have a second shelter house next year? It may bump that up some, right? Well, it should, but we can't budget for stuff that we don't know for sure. About. Right. So, yeah, so if we, but we end up getting approved, we we can assume we're going to have a little bit, but you also have to assume there's a walk. Are we going to get double the amount of rentals, or are we just going to get the old shelter house? Okay. But until we know for sure that we're approved for that, we didn't want to budget. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. So we have a little bit of an increase, and maybe hopefully that will be more. Okay. Interest, we just said miscellaneous receipts, $1,000. Water tower program, we receipt back in. Oh, sure. Hello? You're over here, Mr. Weissbinder. Why do you want to sit over there? You don't have to. You can sit down on the corner. Chief, Chief needs some company. <laughs> He's had a hectic week. Are we? Uh, sorry, we're late. That's all right. Just now getting into you. literally the general fund revenue too. You haven't missed but maybe three minutes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So the other for the general fund revenue water tower program reimbursement. This will be the last payment that the water fund was um, advanced for the water tower maintenance that they are paying the portion back to the general fund. That's twenty-eight thousand. So we're looking at one million four hundred eighty thousand four hundred eight dollars as our number for our estimated general revenue, general fund revenue. And now we get into the expenses. And just so council knows, when we put these revenues in here, especially with the income tax and all that stuff, we actually get what we call a settlement sheet from the county. So they actually dictate what we can put in there. If I'm just speaking, please do. So it's not like we have blind numbers that we just throw in there. We do have the guidance from the county auditor that we use. Okay, so now we're going to start on the preparations for the general fund, and I'm going to put these in categories. The first one being personnel. And that is uh, council's wages and the benefits that go along with it, $51,888. That is line one on your ordinance total. <laughs> Mr. Cobb, I printed out a hard copy. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to deal with that. Do you need the lights on? Just 
we got no, 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 no. I'm fine. Okay. I can't hardly see anybody. <laughs> okay. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the okay, yes, please. I didn't want to get behind. Okay, so now in the uh, categories, we have tra training travel transportation at 3,000. And I did bump that up because we'll have some new council members if they wanted to do some sunshine law training or anything like that. Great. Under contractual is $8,500 in terms of these items, maintenance of equipment, membership dues, and strategic. Sure. Okay. Well, council, do you have a mind if Mr. Lindsay asked the question? Sir? The, uh, on the council retreat of 5000 is the council going somewhere? I'm just curious. We were last year. We were in the retreat. Is there a reason to have 5000 for a retreat someplace? There's been talks of it. I don't know if it, I mean, we've been talking about it for a while now. I don't know if it'll happen or not, but I don't see, me personally, I don't see an issue with it being there because if it's there, it's, yeah, we, don't do it. we don't, again, we don't use it. It just rolls back in. Okay, I, I was just wondering on that. Thank you. This came about due to the fact that the council had been talking about the retreat for a number of years. We have not had a retreat where we would sit down and outline the plan for upcoming years. Okay. And I believe at that point, council decided it was a good idea. Now, whether that retreat turns out to be two four-hour sessions at uh, the uh, yeah, Quonset Hut, the shelter house here, Lord only knows. Other cities have brought in, I guess the word is facilitators, and those facilitators are nowhere cheap. But I think to keep this city going and put it on the path for which we need to be, that possibly we need to sit down and discuss where we're going, what the outlines are, get an input from each and every council member. Fair enough. Okay. Mr. Cobb. I don't know if I'm in the right one or not, but what I'd like to see added in here is about a twenty-five, thirty thousand to hire a part-time college person to search for grants. That's a daily operation position that would be up to me. That would be a day-to-day -day operation position that would be up to me. I only have to go to council for finance director or our law director. But it's something I will consider. Well, I mean, we're losing grants out there. You're busy where you can't do it. We actually get a lot of grants in a year. Pardon? We, we do our fair share about obtaining grants. Most of that playground equipment out there is based off grant money. But as you were saying, it's something I've had in the back of my mind about hiring a grant writer. I just haven't determined if I'm going to do that citywide as a full-time position or like a part-time position. Um, but we do pretty good at attaining a lot of grants. Grants are very competitive nowadays, but in order to get grants, you got you usually got to have some sort of matching fund to go with that. 100% free grants are kind of few and far between anymore nowadays. So it's kind of pointless to have a grant writer if you don't have grant matching money. So it's something that we'll think about how we're going to move forward down the road. But yeah, it's definitely on my mind. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Thank Good you, Bridge. Great question. Back to you, Ms. Harris. Okay. Back to the general fund materials and supplies. We have $1,900 in that category. We have no capital for next year. $500 miscellaneous for a total in the council expenditure $65,788. Moving on. City manager, okay, here we go. So city manager's wages are 198502. Before you go any further, <laughs> that is not all my salary. I make 83 a year. Um, however, I will be approaching you guys before the year end for something else. Uh, but a lot of that, about 38,000 of that, 
is a potential reorg with Mr. Kiko and moving most of his pay out of some of the other funds we're putting them in mind. So when you see that increase, it's not, I'm going to go for you guys 148,000 a year. It's a little bit of mine plus someone else's that we pull out. So. Combination. Okay, training travel category, $2,500. Under our contractual for the manager, it's $3,650. Under materials and supplies, $4,100. We have $3,000 in capital expenditures, $750 in miscellaneous for his department or the manager department, $212,500. So on here, if you look, you um, historically my fuel costs have been low just because I very rarely put in for fuel reimbursement. I I'm going to be doing that, so we up that to 1,500. Um, I reduced operational supplies, so I kind of did a good job of looking at mine. Um, but if you have any questions on that? We go ahead to explain it. Any questions? So you've been eating the fuel costs? Um, I put in uh, sometimes. This has been an argument with him for years and i don't mean that in a bad way no, I, mean, no, it I mean it's like we've told him put your fuel mileage in and absolutely i mean it's great that he does it i mean it's a nice gesture but you shouldn't be doing it and a lot of the times it's just like i by the time i remember to do it it's four months since the last time i did it and i can't do it accurately so I mean, and that goes for any city in Peoria that's doing any yeah sure, sure. i trust that with mm -hmm. everyone yeah put, put in three mileage in there. No other questions? We'll go to the next category. That is the finance um, department. And just like Mr. Bridge said, this wages for the finance department is based on four full-time employees and benefits. Training and transportation is 6000 Contractual total, 91500 most of that is the uh, CCA contracted fees. Office supplies, uh, materials, twelve thousand, and a lot of the finance department supports most of the supplies in the office. So again, it's a, it's a multiple. It's not just my pens and paper. It's everybody in the in the front office. Capital for the finance is ninety three thousand. Uh, miscellaneous refunds, 66000 These refunds are now um, a larger amount than what it used to be. It consists of the shelter house deposits, mainly, that we now take and then refund. So I have to have an expense account to send those back. And also, you can see my notes. Any refunds that would be, um, the, we have one more tax incentive, which is fab metal. That's a big amount. That'll drop to a lot lower number. This is Fab Metal's last year for that, for his tax incentive. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the finance department? Have we, I see the medical insurance has jumped up. Have we got a quote from her? Yeah, we're still just, waiting on that. We put in a 10% increase. Okay. Um, so we should have that soon. Um, I got mine today and it's 16% increase. How much? 16%. 16%. So we had a similar thing like that last year, but I told him to take it back out the market. I'm going to do that and bid it again, I guess, and we got a little lower. So um, depending on what the numbers look like, I'll probably have them go back out and see what they get from it. Uh, but yeah, we're not. Okay. It's, we don't know yet. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Next one is the planning department. Wages for the planning department, 134, 134,873, and that is for um, full-time and a part-time 30 hour a week training travel um, they put in a comprehensive plan which is new this year and that category then would be eight thousand dollars in training for both the uh, the new team members under the contractual eighty one thousand five hundred we are breaking down and making a new uh, fund for the community development. It was included in maintenance of facilities in the first budget. They did not have a place set up at that time. So just breaking, breaking that out a little bit separate. 
And if you remember what that one is, that's for us to do various things. Right now we're going to tear down some old um, houses that need to be torn down if we want to do street 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 improvements. That where that pot of money comes from. Under materials and supplies, eight thousand dollars. They upped a little bit in the small tools, minor equipment for um, items for the retail center. Everything else about the same. A little bit more in fuel. Capital was approved at fifteen thousand for his capital budget. Miscellaneous at fifteen hundred. Planning department total two hundred forty-eight thousand eight hundred seventy-three dollars. questions I'm going to move on to law director law director we just increased um, a little bit that's a, another one you kind of standard you never know you don't know what you run into so we have 70,000 in the law but I, I will note from when we switch law directors from previous to current you can see the drop off in here and the how much we spend a year mm -hmm. so with the prior one we averaged anywhere from 62 to 100 and with our current we're down last year a full four year with them we were under 27. no questions we'll move on to parks park department wages and benefits 30,483 that is one prorated person I believe. would that be so that's just like one person that's getting divided up between yeah, multiple. It's actually a quarter, a quarter of a half of a house. Okay, half of a half. And there's a seasonal position included in that. Where's the other half of them? Well, he's all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> we have him in water sewer. <laughs> so he runs them all, so he gets a little bit of his salary out of, of every department. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, we just talked about that. <coughs> there was too many in the payroll department, but the benefits and anyway. Mm -hmm. We'll talk later, but that's not like that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Training transportation, nothing. Contractual thirty three thousand nine hundred dollars. Under materials and supplies, six thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. Capital has 68000 no debt, miscellaneous 1000 department a little less than last year, $140,233. Mm. Questions on par? Mm. Nope. Special events. Without a lot of input, we duplicated the 5000 for the uh, Parks and Rec Board we had last year. We upped the fireworks um, a little bit because you came in a little higher than what we guessed on last year. So we went, I think you spent 16, so we, we put it at 18. And we put a little bit more up on the holiday um, for the employees. So we wanted you guys' input. We we're not going to put a random dollar amount in for your board that you guys report to, that we report to you, mainly your park and rec board. Um, so that'd be your guys' discussion. How many you want to put in there? We can adjust. Um, even anything really in that line item, we wanted your guys' input on. on Maybe part. not so much the employee appreciation part, but, you know, it's decent, of course. But we didn't know, like, where do you guys want, well, how much money you want the Parks and Rec Board to have? I mean, we're not going to make that call. I mean, go ahead, sir. Has uh, the Parks and Rec had any input on this budget? No. So we don't know what they've got planned. No, they report to you guys. We don't. They don't. We don't man them. So they would have to come to you guys and tell them what to tell them what they want to you. It's hard to put a number on it when you don't even have. I mean, they don't have. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, we don't know. No. Yeah. So Either way. That's something yeah. we can look at later. I mean, yeah. it's out of the general sure. fund, so it has a lot. I mean, the worst they could do is not to do. Well, I'm sure, we have to do a supplemental at some point in time throughout the year. But maybe at the next meeting or two, you guys ask them to come present what they need um, and their plans and kind of we can put something in there. Um, if you want to keep the five, you want to go up to ten, you want to go up to seven. I think, I think with five, I mean, since we don't have a history to go off of, and they, you know, they've had, you know, issues getting organized and members and things. I mean, five's not a lot of money, but it's enough for them to do maybe one small event Started, or something. I yeah. think, I, I think it's good seed, a good seed money mm -hmm. start. Yep. <laughs> 
2020, they couldn't because of COVID, so that was yeah. that was a bad year. Um, and this year, Mr. Lindsay, quite frankly, they had a hard time getting numbers, but I think they're starting to get to quorum, and they will be doing stuff. Right. Yeah. So basically, the five grand from last year's goal was. Yeah. 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 yeah that indeed. Okay. What do you guys think about the fireworks? Should we beef that up a little bit? Do a little bit of a show or leave it where it is and work maybe get some private donations or you know, I mean for for what we've spent, we've gotten a great show. We haven't had any feedbacks. I mean, not that I've heard that, that it was a that it was too small. Mm -hmm. I mean I think it's fine right where it's at, but I mean I'm not opposed to a little <laughs> bit more if that's what the group wanted to do. I mean I think if we're getting good feedback, I'd just leave it right where it's at. Well we spent sixteen. Should we go up to, I mean, it's, I mean, I mean, I don't know how much the cost of service is going to go up in a year. True. I was wondering if you, if you heard anything from your vendors of future price increases. Any firework vendors? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I'd say the big thing is the supply. I'm assuming a lot of those come from overseas, too. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> that assumption would be correct. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm sure you'll see maybe a little increase, but I think the supply is just going to be the question, if anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. So, like well, one of those yeah. things almost. They run hand in hand. So supply is low, cost goes True. True. Mm -hmm. True. So, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to just making an even 20. Yeah. To be honest. Um, just to have, give us some. Because the less times you have to come back and ask for more money, the better. The better. Mr. Cobb? Huh? Do you have anything? No, I, I agree with the 20000 Go for 20 Okay. Sure. Okay, it's in there. Um, well, did you guys really do motions for that, or how does that work in these kind of settings? I don't remember. I didn't. Well, you already have it. At, here. Oh, no, you just changed it, right? That's right. Oh, okay, I was like, wait a minute, it doesn't match. Okay. stay up with you. Be so I want someone to just make a motion. Yeah. So moved. Second. A motion by Mr. Nowakowski, second by Ms. Eggleston to adjust the fireworks to a twenty thousand dollar cap. Okay. Uh, Vice Mayor Cook. Yeah. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Robald. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yeah. And then we have Councilman Eggleston. Yeah. Councilman Nowakowski. Yeah. Motion passes six to zero. Are you comfortable with that, Colleen? I mean, even though it's already done now? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. Coming back to you. General Fund Lands and Buildings. Um, this is a, a pretty good contractual amount that basically everything listed in here communications, copier, YouTube, professional services, maintenance. 101000 Under the materials and supplies, these items 4,500. Under capital, we have 43,000. If anybody needs reminded on what the capital is too, I have a tab that we can flip over and tell you what these capital amounts are. But it's what we what you voted on not too long ago, but some of it you might not remember exactly. Be glad to go through it. Notes and interest for debt, we have 15,000. Miscellaneous at 2,000. Total lands and building, 165,500. Also down from the current year. Here's our new one for mayor's court. Oh, just a second. Oh, sure. Mr. Mr. Vice Mayor. I know we put, uh, what, 15,000 in there for the government center. That's on down in a different fund. I'll show you. Oh, okay. Right. You mean for the saving for the building? Yeah. Okay. okay. Any other questions on lands and buildings? Okay. Mayor's Court, brand new. I set up wages just to have them on the books, but we basically, by the contract, we believe their services are going to be under professional services for the people that are be running it. Okay. Maintenance of facilities, equipment, dues, contractual comes at 17000 Thank you. Materials and supplies at 2000 $5,000 in the capital. And a thousand in miscellaneous. It's kind of rounded up the same number at twenty-five thousand. Again, that one's that one's just really hard to guess until we get into it. So we'll keep you updated if we need more or less. Okay. Right. Next 
one is miscellaneous in the general fund. Training and travel at 500. Communication services, postage, auditor fees, state fees, record retention, legal advertising, codified. This pretty much takes everything that's not specified as in this miscellaneous. We have that at 92,000 total. Materials and supplies at 4,000. No capital, no notes, no debt. We're under, which one are we under again? This is our miscellaneous. Okay, mine has a smudge on. I was just making sure I was reading it. So I see street lighting. Would that be? I don't think it is, but would the would the street light post be under this? No, it'll be under. Um, I mean, when we do the replacement. Right, because obviously yeah. we've been taking. We might want to up that number. Yeah. We we've, we've already taken care of it. Yeah. It's, okay. We've been taking it out of the street and then putting it back when the insurance. Puts so it it's a, to us. okay. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so this is all the other categories that just fall into the miscellaneous for the general fund. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, I'm sorry, Colin, pausing here. Um, do you guys have any need or think you'll have any special elections in 2022? Because so we need to bump that up. Because if you look at the 11,000 number, that was the year that we got billed for the 2019 special election. Right. I don't see why we would. Well, do I mean, <clears throat> what is our... Uh, What's the ideals with the uh, soon to be open to council seats? We're just going to take applications. Yeah, I mean that would be the, that would be the. We have to yeah, Jake hasn't even finalized any of that. But has he even got the Jake? No. I'm going to just keep it as is and see how it rolls throughout the year. I would. Just I mean, keep in the back of your mind, you may have to revisit that. I, mean, I don't see why we would, but yeah, I mean you never know. Sure. Total in their general fund miscellaneous would be 106500 Last one is the transfers. Transfers, I always work backwards and make sure that the rest of the fund balances can support themselves. And if not, then we do the transfers from the general fund. Historically, we always do debt, and that is down here. Um, this is what you were talking about, Vice Mayor Cook. Uh, transfer from the general fund to put into the uh, future savings for government center. There's 25,000 you put in this year, so I carried it forward. That is totally up to council. <laughs> Covered it thinking that it might, if it was one year, it might be two, but. I think it's a good idea. If, if we've got the money to start putting money away each year for this, mm -hmm. That way, if we ever do get to the point that we can afford a new government center, the idea of biting the bullet would be a lot easier. Mr. Cobb? You're on what? Government center right now? Mm -hmm. This is yeah. transferring out of the general fund to, to put into the government center savings account. Now, are we still scheduled on the pool liner this year? Yes, and we'll get to that. I'll show you. Bear with me. I'm, I'm having fine. trouble seeing this thing. It's just if I keep doing this, everybody will get like vertigo. So we'll be getting down to that. No, everything's kind of blurry. I just. Yeah, but, okay. Any other comments? So basically, what you're seeing, Mr. Cobb, is just under that 2022. What you see now is just a $25,000 transfer from the general fund to the government center. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have a $100,000 transfer once you get to the bottom. But other than that, we're not transferring money to the pool like we did last year and years before. There's no transfer to the cemetery. So if we reduce how much transfer we need to do out of the general fund. So really, you're just looking at the two numbers there. But, but that 25000 just being put aside for the building of a government center, Yeah, correct? yeah, it's going into a different fund. There's like a fund later on down. It's called government center fund. And that's where that money is going. It's going separate into the account. No one can touch it other than for a government center. So good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. And then this highlighted one here is the oh, new one. one uh, transfer to the uh, water no, fund. If we get the, um, is it a grant? The, um, it is a grant. The, yeah, that's the matching portion. And that's our matching. 
if we do not get the grant that comes back out stays in the fund balance but if we do it's it's uh, held out for it it's a huge wonderful project mm -hmm. yeah. sure how much is the, uh, the grant for that you applied for um it's over two million but what's it that? 2.5 million it's a 10 percent match i was just, I was just curious i thought that's where it should have been mm -hmm. Total transfers from the general fund this year would be three hundred and seventy five thousand. That includes that. Mm -hmm. And here are your ending balances. We're estimating that the general fund is going to begin with one point two million, one million two hundred forty two thousand five hundred and eleven. That comes from this number, which is the end of this year. This is still our guesstimated numbers when we did this budget this time last year. These will all get updated when we close our books. So traditionally, we always have more revenue than expenses when we work our budget. So this number that carries over to the beginning of 2022 should be higher. But this is how we work our budget. We have to use what we have right now available. Our total revenue that we just went over for the general fund would be 1.4 million. Expenditures at 2 million, using a little bit of fund balance, brings an estimated ending balance of 639,000 at the end of 2022. And again, that's at once we get our books closed for 2021. And I put the actual revenue, these, these are our budgets, they turn into actual when we close the books and then these numbers will change and they'll get carried over okay and historically to help um, to see this historically <coughs> we have always you get this is really high revenue expense 2016 2017 revenues over expense revenue over expense we traditionally always have more revenue than expense but so that number, that number is going to shoot. Oh, but yeah. when we do our budgets, it's almost always more expensive than revenue because we have to cover everything that I need to cover. Guess about our revenue, but we watch it. If we ever get short on our revenue, we have to come back to you and reduce our appropriations. Can you just, I mean, I know you were just like, can you scroll, whatever it is, down and back over? I just want to see the ending, the ending, um, and then scroll left. I just want to see the ending. Yeah, there you go. Hold on. So that was my talking point. Yeah. If you look at the history, in 2016, we ended with the general fund with 524000 Yeah. In 2020, we ended with one point six, almost $1.7 million. Right. Nine. So that shows you in one, two, three, four, five, how much money we've, we've been able to yeah. really pad that general fund with. And this one, historically, will too. We'll and we're up. on track right now. We will, When we give you the monthly budget report, we watch to make sure we're in, in line with what our, our percentage our, should be our, for that month. Right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So when you see the revenue report, you'll see a percent collected. Then anytime we see anything over 100 percent, we're going to exceed our revenue projections that we put in there. And that was pretty detailed for the general fund. The rest are going to be a little bit smaller. Um, if you're ready, we can go right into street. This is just street construction, right? Yes. Or does, I mean, the street construction, does that, um, that's not payroll and stuff, that's just the street construction, right? Well, street construction will have payroll too. Okay. When you're done, I got a question. Okay. So our revenue for street construction is motor vehicle license and state gas tax. We're estimating that at 320000 It's not a big increase. It's pretty steady. We're hoping that it will. Miscellaneous income we threw five hundred dollars in, so we're estimating three hundred twenty thousand five hundred on the street funds revenue. Under expenditures, wages come in at two hundred and fifty four thousand five hundred and forty five dollars. In that department, training and travel at fifteen hundred. Contractual sixty seven thousand five hundred and fifty. Maintenance of infrastructure is the big one, and how many that was for decorative pole replacement. There, I had my notes. Yeah, normally we were sitting at like three or five thousand. We bumped it to thirty-one, so we would be able to purchase, get the insurance money, still purchase the poles, not have to come back and reappropriate that insurance money, and yet still do our maintenance of infrastructure for actual street work or street construction stuff. In your semi-annual street, that was new. 
Yep. That number works a lot higher than the contractual again is sixty-seven thousand five hundred and fifty. <coughs> Under the materials and supplies, thirty-four thousand five hundred. Capital is fifty-nine thousand. Total for the um, street construction fund expense four hundred eighteen thousand ninety-five dollars. Okay. Is that um, the wages, 140, 146, uh, 552. How many, how many is that? Is that for the entire street department? We will have under street, we have a quarter of Howie, we have three quarters of Greg's Lottery, Dave Coleman's 100%. We have a mechanic position that's open. If it's filled, it's included in there and half of Tracy. Okay. So they're kind of split out again when you get them doing multiple right. jobs. We kind of split them up a little bit. Um, the question I was going to wanted to ask was, and I, I think I've asked um, Mr. Kitko about this before in previous council meetings, is what about entertaining an idea of you guys hiring another employee that could float between? You know, because remember, yeah, I asked you in a meeting, you know, do you need another body in street or do you need one water? And you said, uh, I don't always need someone street. There's times where you could use a full person in the street, but maybe not so in water, vice versa, just depending on the season. Would be beneficial because it seems like you guys are, and I don't mean this in a negative way, but you guys are doing a good job. I mean, when you guys are just slammed with, with weeds or, you know, street repair, whatever it may be, or the water department's busy with this, to hire a person that you could put between the two departments, or three, whatever it's to benefit you year round. I mean, to me, that seems like a good idea, but, I, you know, that's, that would be your, you know, I mean, wouldn't it alleviate, wouldn't that alleviate a little stress off of some of the departments in some of the heavier seasons? We, we have that taken care of. We have a part-time park position. We have 14000 for this year. Okay. For all down. Is that in addition to what you already have? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we, uh, so when it comes to those day-to-day -day positions, we have, we've taken account of that. Um, so we, we have looked at getting that position and uh, someone go around, but all that's already been paid in. So you're saying that you guys are going to hire what a person to float between the, the, the big department? We'll see what the needs are, but yeah, we will probably get some of those. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it took us a while to get one of our seasonals. It took <laughs> yeah, us well. almost three months to get them hired. So. Are you? Ref I mean, I don't know how far you guys work from this. Are you saying uh, just someone part time or a full time? I mean, what do you think? What I'm saying is, if you guys approve it in the budget. We will handle it from there. As far as those, like Mr. Cobb asked about that grant writer, if it doesn't fall into a managerial position that council approves, as far as your law director or your finance director, we have the money in there if you guys approve it. What we'll do is we'll get with Howie and figure out what his best needs are, but right. we just need the money in there first. Whether it be a float or whether it be someone to do garden beds, we don't know. We don't know if these are going to be at that point in time. Right. So we may get some new staff members in that can be, has a little bit more expanded skill set than prior guys had. So, really need to see how everything comes out but at the end of the day we just need the money earmarked in there for us to be able to do that what was the amount you said is earmarked for that 14 14, 14 mm -hmm. so do you think it should be higher say if, if you guys have your conversations and with your admins and say we could you know if howie was to say i could use a full time and break it up between three groups you would probably need more than 14 if well, that was the case when seasonal people can only work x amount of hours according to the union contract and we know how much we pay them so we can do the math before we all need so how much is this person like 1,500, 1,500? Uh, 1,560, I think. A year. So. Hours a year. No, but I'm, what I'm saying, and I understand that, but I'm saying, what if you decide you could use one completely full-time person that bounces around, say, waste, water, and streets? Full-time would be tough because we have to get benefit packages and all that. I'd probably hire two part-time people for the one full-time person for that. Okay. If you can get this, why would I hire someone full-time and have to pay 30 up to 30000 a year extra for health insurance when I get to two people? Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah, kind of. Um, it's cheaper to hire part-time instead of hiring a full-time position. Right. Um, and then my next question on the same thing. would I know years back, I know we, I, I can't remember if it was this exact council or, you know, prior to the pandemic, though, there was talks about the new Christmas decorations for Main Street. Would yeah. that be in this? Yeah, it's in there. Yeah, Derek's going to work on that. Oh, so yeah. it's in here? 
Hey, you got the money for this year and next year. Oh, so we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. We already went through the we planning. Went through mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in my community development. Oh, okay, but, great. Yeah. All right, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Mr. Kiko, how much salt did you spend in salt last year? Uh, well, in 2020 it was... We didn't have to buy any because we had carryover from 19. Okay. And, and we had a warm season, so, but typically we run about four to 5,000 a load, which gets us to 200 ton. And how much you have on here right now? Uh, we've got about three quarters of a barn, so we're sitting over 100 ton. Can Dalton buy what you what you may need or not? Well, there's some in State Highway as well okay. that that get get split with this. Okay. Any other questions for the street construction fund? State Highway. Revenue sources are motor vehicle license, state gas, 26000 real consistent. And the expenditures are part of contractual be uh, maintenance of infrastructure, equipment. The contractual will be 6000 Materials and supplies at 6000 Miscellaneous at none for a total of twelve. Questions on state highway. Pretty easy one. State permissive tax. It's an easy one too. Revenue source is your vehicle permissive tax. Comes in at sixty-two thousand. Expenditures are part of payroll. And that is Tracy and a quarter of our family. You know, their wages go in that. It's pretty much just an even revenue and then expenses. Any questions on permissive tax? Street levy improvement. Revenue sources are real estate taxes, homestead, $134,556. Expenditures are Contractual, 172500 The capital, miscellaneous, total of 173000 And that pretty much we just use a fund balance there. Any questions on street improvement levy? Emergency ambulance capital. Real estate, homestead, revenue source, $33,639. Capital is just saving for capital. We have no capital this year. We're working on rebuilding that fund. We do have auditor fees for $3,000. This account is um, impending with our audit for some fund balance adjustments. But basically, there's no expenditures other than the auditor fees that we have to pay and the revenue sources, the uh, real estate taxes. Any questions on emergency ambulance capital? Ambulance operating. They're um, excuse me. The revenue sources are real estate taxes, homestead rollback, $218,653. Elizabeth Township contract. And emergency ambulance operations, $784,750 for a total estimated at $1,003,403 for the ambulance operating. Expenses for the wages, EMT's salary, $626,477. Training and transportation at 3000 
their contractual expenditures, $103,350. Materials and supplies at thirty-one thousand. Capital seventy-eight thousand. Miscellaneous is a thousand. Their expenditures are eight hundred fifty-two thousand eight hundred twenty-seven dollars. And they're building their fund balance up pretty good. You have a question? Any questions with the emergency ambulance operating? No. Nope. Good. Fire capital equipment. Revenue source is your real estate taxes again. Homestead robots, sixty-seven thousand two hundred seventy-eight. Very steady. Expenditures for the fire capital. The auditor fees for collecting those, and we are saving for the fire truck. And that is it in that fund. Any questions for fire capital? I see, sorry, I see that we've been saving for the new fire truck for a few years now. Do you know what that balance is currently? It will the be the 200000 Okay. And we're talking about changing it and kind of pulling it out of, and, and, and Randy will be talking about setting it aside as notes for, but getting it out of the appropriation because we're really not buying it yeah. this year. But it will have 200000 So This fund balance will be 260. So what I want to talk to council about is we've been putting that on the capital improvement plan just to save the money. Um, so we want to kind of switch that up. So I want to bring some legislation to you guys to amend it to get it out. It'll still be in the fund balance, but we don't want to put it in the capital improvement plan because we, we're not capitalizing it. It's not there yet. It's too early. We don't put it in the capital plan until we have the actual thing to buy it. And then when we put it in there, it does impact our fund balance. So if we need to go get a loan or something like that, and they look at that fund balance, and we need all this or comp, whatever the case may be, that looks like it's actually extended where it's not, it's in the safety account, basically. So basically what we're going to do is just get it off of the CIP, and we'll amend that, still be in there, but just not on our capital treatment plan until we're actually ready to buy the um, truck. Kind of, I'll ask you, since you, what kind of price are we looking at? I mean, anywhere from half to three quarters of a mil? We're going to $500,000. $500, Last time I talked to a sales, that's up in the end of the world, we deal with it after about $450,000 this year. Each year is about a 5, 4 to 5% increase right now. Thank you. Mr. Cobb? Can you go back to wages, please? <coughs> All right, I'm glad you asked for a second. We haven't got the back fire, up. We haven't got the fire wages yet. Yeah. We did the ambulance. Did the ambulance. Wages. Well, I, I see wages on there. That's why I was asking. That does include what did you submit? The two dollar raise or a dollar fifty raise to your people? It, it, raised, it gave a two dollar raise to our paramedics and two dollar raise to our EMTs. Uh, bring the uh, paramedics up to sixteen dollars an hour and EMTs up to fourteen dollars an hour. Where does that put us according with who we can meet with? with? What who we can area area that will put us in the Ballpark. In the ballpark? Still will uh, we'll, we'll be probably still a dollar an hour behind. Are you comparing yourself yeah. to Bethel? Yes. How many more runs do they do us in the year? How many, how many of their much busier department than us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, but to on a couple of the other departments, mm -hmm. we'll be ahead. Uh, it just depends on, the, on where you look at. Yeah. But we do have it in there for for the reason. But you're asking about the wages, Mr. Cobb. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got to keep him competitive enough so he doesn't lose any, per any more personnel. There's a lot of administrative staff. Pardon? There's a lot of staff that you need to bring the wages up just to remain competitive. Yeah, but this man is putting in a lot of time here to take care of what he doesn't have covered it. He does a fantastic job. And we don't want to lose fire chief. He's too good. Okay. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with you on that 100 percent Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Anyone else? All right. Thank you. All right. Fire um, operating is next. And our revenue sources again, real estate taxes and homestead for $252,292. Expenditures are wages. Of course, um, 
fire and, and uh, ambulance are kind of prorated, so their wages are for the fire operating 153,369. Training and transportation is at 7,000. Um, contractual is 81,600. Materials and supplies at 23,000. Capital is 118. Miscellaneous is 1,000. Total department for fire operating $383,969. And they are um, doing pretty good on their fund balance this year. I think that's going to increase. But any questions on fire operating? Clerk of Courts is going to be a new fund. We got approval from the state auditors to, to uh, open this up. This revenue will come from the fines for Mayor's Court. And then I'm kind of new on this. $10 per something they collect those in this fund. Oh, well, that's for your moving violations. Oh, good. Okay, i got to learn this one. Expenditures are computer software, hardware. It's just basically a $300 revenue, a $200 estimate expense, but a $100 balance, just to set some numbers. Same with the next one. There are two funds. This one is the Mayor's Computerization Fund, with a certain amount of the revenues coming in. This fund, estimating around 200 and expenditures at 100 for the computer. Any questions that Randy can answer on the Mayor's <laughs> Court? <laughs> So the state allows us to reimburse ourselves for, for certain things. Um, how these things are funded is by certain types of moving violations. So in state and mayor's court in Ohio, if you get a moving violation, we automatically charge you $10 more. That extra $10 gets put into some of these funds. We also have to go and, and tell them not to worry about those things, I'm sorry. We also have to pay the state back for some things that we do that go into indigent funds and then um, basically um, alcohol AA courses for people who can't afford it themselves. So. The state hasn't really dictated out with what we got to do. We can't repeat the fine scope that you guys approved. It's, it, it spells all that out and that, so we can review that if you need to. Um, but yes, we'll be able to receive some of these things based off the type of fines that we do collect. Thank you, sir. It's been a learning experience on this court this year for everyone involved. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? When you're ready. Okay. Helpful Avenue. Next fund. Revenue sources are real estate taxes, homestead, $64,379. We pretty much give everything back that we collect to the Clark County Health Department, less the auditor fees of 64000 So this fund just usually balances out. Any questions on the health levy? American Rescue Fund, this is our new federal grant that we received this current year, 291000 We get the other um, amount probably in June or July of next year, so we book that as revenue, $291,624. On the expenditure side, uh, we'll be doing a transfer out, and it goes to the wastewater account, and we'll show you where that money is being used for, what they're purchasing. But that fund balance right now will still have 200000 in it that we have not talked about using, and that will be a budget adjustment if we do anything next year, or it'll roll over to the next year's. Any questions on the American right. Rescue Fund? Yeah, there's some at the door. So that particular pot of money, Council, so you know, it is earmarked for certain criteria that the state allows us to spend. Um, Okay, if no questions, we'll move on to the police levy. Someone, someone needs help. Cat is stuck in the tree. Yeah. You want to go get it? No. <laughs> He's doing that ladder there. Police income tax revenue, uh, 550000 Expenditures are training and travel, 500 Contractual, 668000 most of that being the contract for the Sheriff's Department for our deputies. Not 
should go up a little bit. But I will get it okay. <laughs> Materials and supplies, 24000 Capital outlay, 17500 And no debt. Miscellaneous at 2000 Total police levy expenditure, 712000 any questions on the police levy um yeah i did i had one so the difference of one thousand or one hundred sixty-two thousand dollars so that's i mean i know we've talked about that a little bit we're gonna have to see our, re our history looks like uh 17 we actually had more expenditures than revenue 18 we had more revenue than expense 19 more revenue than expense 20, 20 was barely but good um so as we get closer again i think we're going to be fine right now we're running good our contract has been less than what we budgeted okay because remember how they budget, they, they, the contract, how they charge us is, is mm -hmm. say we got five deputies, they charge us for the full family plan, the whole nine yards. So that is what the contract will exceed. By the time the year is done, we, we not everyone they have is on a family plan, so we we'll see some savings on that. But that's just how they do the contract. Every year they just charge us for what, if we had the highest step deputy and the highest rate of insurance. Okay. Um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. But when you look at this stuff as we move on, we do have that fifth deputy on, on that schedule. So we'll have to watch this fund balance. Um, right now, Major Sack is out. He was on an injury. And they did ask me if I wanted to replace that, that replace him. But I told him to hold off because it's going to allow us to save some money on that budget for this year. We had two first shift deputies. So we still have our first shift deputy covered. It's not like we're down that thing. But I did, I was trying to spin this out a little bit so we get closer to the year. We'll see how much we got. Um, if they would have said, yeah, the whole, we need to have the coverage, I would have another one come in. But right now, we're just not getting charged for it. Sure. I could tell you where we're at right now if that would help. We're under. We can go. We'll, we'll watch it. Any other questions on police levy? Is that something council would entertain if it gets too low to go back to that fourth deputy opposed to five? I mean, I think you'd almost not have a choice, really, unless you wanted to supplement more out, have to supplement out, of, the out of the general fund. Yeah. So that just sort of would have to be a heart-to-heart -heart discussion on how you'd want to handle it. So uh, we usually get that contract from them in December because they have to go through their, their negotiations first to get that pay rate. And then what we'll do if it shoots up a lot, we'll bring it. Clearly, you guys have to vote on that. But we'll look at that number and do a projection to see how many more years maybe we can do that to, and they have to go back off the floor. Okay. Okay, general bond retirement. Um, revenue source, real estate, homestead. And the general fund always supplements as a transfer in, and that takes care of our bond and our debt payments, which are 106000 And that one stays pretty much. We just supplement what it means. Same with the next one, the Twin Creeks Infrastructure Bond. We have a little bit of uh, a little bit of assessment to come in at 14500 um, we chose not to, this current year, do a transfer in from the general fund, and we're letting the fund balance pay its debt. And that is just slowly going down. I think we have like five or six years left on it. And we should be close, just letting the fund balance pay it. Pay up. Oh, can you pull up that, find out when this one of these, on, when oh, one of the twin creeks falls off? That's what I was getting ready to ask you. 2020. I think she just said five years. Oh, did you? Hey, off. You know, what's that? 2022, 2035, 2026. There it is. I know it's a different fund, but that's 2026. What was the water plant payoff? You know? Same December of that year, Same also. Year. Yeah, that'd be a big, big reduction. Yeah, that's great. So we've done a really good job. The past councils and this council is not trying not to add more debt, and we're actually doing a really good job of 
came down to debt that we have. Um, when I took over, we're at a double B, we're at a triple B minus, a triple B minus, but now which is really good, our next step up is double A. We get to double A, then it's opens up a whole other world of great rates and all kinds of stuff. So right. we're getting there. Good. We are getting there, but we don't like to add to that. We just like us, the more debt we add, it goes against us. Any questions on the Twin Creeks bond? Okay. Water operating. Revenue sources from our users. And uh, miscellaneous receipts, we're estimating a million, $6,350 in revenue. Going down to the expenditures, wages first, 370264 So comparable to this year. We have training and transportation at 3,300. Contractual is 305,000. The difference is this item, the tower maintenance used to be, those totals were in our capital. And again, we pulled them out, they're not a capital, they're maintenance. So they'll always stay up here in our operating expenditures. Same dollar amount you spent, just a different place to report it. Under the materials and supplies, 103000 Capital, then without that, is still 115500 This is where we're transferring that payment back to the general fund that loaned, and it is the last year. And something new that we were trying to do that should have been done years ago, but we didn't have the cash for it, is to transfer a percentage out to the water capital improvement fund. So those kind of capital should come from the revenue from your enterprise funds. They should take a little bit of that and put it away for your capital. So you're not bringing it in from general fund or other areas. So um, we have 15000 in there, and it's fit pretty good in the budget. Other expenditures are the debt, $239,905 at the water plant. Miscellaneous at $3,500. Expenditures are $1,185,194. The ending balance looks low, but we have a lot of money moving over at the end of this year. Or else we can always take out the transfer to the capital to trim it up a little bit. And I can give you an update on the debt tower maintenance of 115000 I believe it's one or two more years we'll pay that, then that will drop to fifty eight. And then we'll work on their agreement where it's 58 every year, and then they'll be repainting the scarf tower in five more years, and then be keeping it up. So that that number will drop, the maintenance number. Because of yeah, because right now we're still paying for the painting four years ago, but once that once they're recouped all those, then we go down to an annual maintenance fee anywhere between I think it's 40 and 58 thousand for that tower. What kind of just I mean just a ballpark I guess I mean on the average. Year, I mean, not not complete. Just, I mean, what kind of money do you spend on the on that Adams Tower, just on average year? Uh, Adams is zero right now. Well, yeah, now, but I mean, in the past. <laughs> oh, Adams, <laughs> there's the only major expenses you do are you're supposed to do a washout, <laughs> washout um, every two to three years, inspections every year, and those weren't always be able to be funded. Right. Now our scarf tower gets that every year. Okay what the expense is i mean it was originally 700 some thousand for the first seven years so um you know i don't know how they break it down but our maintenance will go to about 50 about fifty thousand a year so that's what it's going to cost us to maintain scar okay so what you're saying is we should probably look into uh, erecting a new adams tower is that what you or just something. said again? that's what i heard yeah, not at this point <laughs> right, maybe you. in the future And real quick too, that 2.5 million um, that I applied for was to get the lead goosenecks out of the old section system, as everybody's aware. Um, if you've been watching the news, the Vandalia, Huber got it, New Bremen, mm -hmm. they've already given out about 100 million of that 250. 
we don't know we still haven't heard anything i haven't heard anything of any of the clark county projects so obviously you you all will be updated um, accordingly one more actually with you saying that what about the um i'm trying to see if it's in here the i know we've talked about it looking for a new well, well field is that is there any money in for that set aside or, or, or some of that capital can eventually be put towards that but okay. i had a swap meeting today which is surface warfare, uh, warfare. Um, surface warfare. Yeah, uh, my Navy day is coming back. Because um, that's something that you want to look into here sooner than later, right? Yes. I'm still can't. Moving on. All right, moving on. So we are at wastewater, revenue sources uh, from the users. Wastewater revenue is one million twenty-eight thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars. We have revenue coming in for the transfer in from the um, American Rescue Fund, ninety thousand of it. Help supplement the expenditures that you're going to see below. In the operating um, wages, five hundred and six thousand eight hundred twenty-five. Training and transportation, 1750 Contractual, 277750 Materials and supplies, 40500 Capital, 115500 Debt, $168,280. Miscellaneous, 1100 for total expenditures, one million one hundred eleven thousand seven hundred and four dollars, and that is under our estimated revenue. And the sewer plant is back on track and doing well. And the increase was so needed. Mm -hmm. Any questions in the wastewater? No. When, when did that increase go in? That was December first. Last it? year, right? Last November. The second one okay. just is getting ready to be implemented okay. now, and then there's two more, two more years. When's the new one be ready to set? Okay. It's the bill that goes out November one, I believe, is the new rate. Okay. So when people, like, we get in the plan, like you guys get reached out by Facebook about bills increasing, that's because of the new rate increase. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just. I, I, yeah. Usually, we have a new rate increase. People will know. They're like, oh, my bill went up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good question. Good question. <clears throat> Can we well. take this one, Mike? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's good. All right. So revenue for uh, swimming pool. We have um, concessions, pool memberships, daily gates. The, the main service revenue is 81000 Now, in this next column here, this 105 that I have, is actual. Since the pool's closed, I was able to take it from our estimated budget, which was lower than that, and put in the actual so we can see where the pool's going to end up. So if you have another really good year like you did this year, of course, the numbers will go up. That's but good. this was about what we budgeted for last year, and I used the same budgeting number. Because historically, in 2020, we only got 64000 And then moving to, we got eighty five. So it's really hard. You know, you never know what the weather's going to be. So I put in 81000 as your revenue. An additional miscellaneous um, is 11000 for a total of 92000 We're going to start there. Expenditures are wages at 52893 <laughs> Training and transportation is 500 Contractual, 32000 Materials and supplies, twenty-seven thousand. Normal capital is six thousand. The capital saved for the liner is forty. So there's to answer your question, Mr. Cobb. We still have the two forties in here that were approved, so they're in our fund balance. So you still will have eighty by this year. By I'm sorry, twenty twenty-two. But it's in the fund balance, though, right? It Go will ahead. be in the fund balance. So we, they will have that to spend for 2022 on the pool liner. I do have just I do have a uh, message in to find out the update because of the mm -hmm. 
the whole material issue, mm -hmm. I do have a, a request in for an updated price. Okay. Technically, by the end of 2022, it's in the 2022's budget. So right now, if so we had to pay 80000 for it. We're going to be paying it ahead of what? Because we're not going to have our revenue in. Yeah. So we'll, okay. we'll just, but as long as by the end of the year, the revenue came in like we projected and we paid for the liner, you're okay. You've got 80000 And this is the first time in one, two, three, four years that hasn't had a transfer. Yeah, we did not put the transfer in this year because we had enough from previous years that mm -hmm. we're using up that balance. And <laughs> technically speaking, if we end the year with the 78, close it, you back out the 60 transfer was full, so had an honest profit of 18. We had about seven. Because that's still like fund balance carry forward. But they had an actual profit this year of like 78. So if the, right now, if that closes the year, is that funding balance 78,000? It won't. So? This is still just budget. I mean, it, it is some actual, I'm sorry. We still have 40,000 in there because we did not spend for here. So that 40 is on top of 78. And gave 60 on the transfer. But they had other fund balances that were in those numbers that were from transfer. The the profit and loss that I gave you last month was your real for that year. You had definite on your own without a transfer. So the the pool's profit this year is gonna be just shy of eight, of eight thousand. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Which is fantastic. Yeah, I bet you if you actually got Tip City or you were. Springfield, to be honest with you, they, I don't think they made any money on their pools. But they would have to be honest. I don't think it's a tip, is it a tip pool part of the city or is it? No, no, no. It's yeah. government. It's government. So. Any questions on the floor? <coughs> Sir? Has the wage increase been allowed? Is that factored into the pool wow. Yes, we increased that from last year. Okay. So it covers the wage increase? Uh-oh. I just caught up there. Yeah. Okay. I think we upped it $4,000, didn't we? Okay, you went up $3,800 or $3,800 versus last year. What's the minimum wage? Nine thirty. How many how many labor hours you have last year? Cole, did you know that top of your head? I know it's going to cost us thirty six more dollars an hour to operate. How many hours are you open last year? Was that thirty six to operate for like just wage? Or is that across the board for your food concessions or everything? Yeah, that's across the board. We're open on a normally 12 hour day, and if you do more, if you have to stay on that day for the time. You're talking about wages, you're not talking about products. So, how, how many, how many yeah, people how many people are on your staff? It varies, but to start the day, we start with at least five to two lifeguards, the front desk, the concession owners. On your payroll, like how many like total people you got? 20, 30, 25? Yeah, probably 20, 20, 30. 25 times how many when you're open three months out of the year so 90 no no it's less than that 12 is over now 60 74 74 yeah because we we but i'll just pick one of the we closed so not talking so so just do 90 times four. I mean, 36 nine dollar day. Yeah, we're open about 74, 74, 75 days. You give yourself some wiggle room. I mean, you guys increased by thirty-eight hundred dollars. Um, to do a, what you say, thirty-six dollar. On, on. So if you have 25 people, right, yeah, I mean, obviously your life starts are adjusted by your tips. So 40 times nine. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yeah, so average save. Yeah. And 40. Yeah, what about 42? Are we comfortable with that? Is that We're at 45 now. No, for, uh, adding 4,200 instead of the 36, okay. adding 4,200. 4, round it to 50. Round it to 50. I, yeah, I'd just say round it to 50. So the new wage is going to be 57,965. Wages end up. Does that make you more comfortable? Yeah. The only other number that's concerning is concession. I ran out of that. I felt like I ran out of money and it was very, very limited, and it was costly. So you spent 14000 but you sold a lot. Right. Um, I, I really cut back on what I was selling. That's the one that's going to remain. No, that, I mean, that wasn't because of you, that was just because the, the supply wasn't there. Well, supply had to have been there because, I mean, you usually spend around 8 to 10 and you spent 14. I, I met with, I think, Howie and Victoria both in July to make sure I was staying, like, I was struggling to stay within my budget. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like, exactly. I was selling so much, I needed to be buying more, and I was exceeding my budget, so, and things cost more now than they did last year, and, because look at this number. This is what you brought in. You brought in thirty-two thousand yeah, in concession. How much you want? How much you want? How much you want? Oh, okay. Yeah, she was buying. Take it out as you want. Three more. I, I've only got five left. Are you looking to do anything different at the concession next year, like different foods or different? How much are fun now? Steak and lobster. Yeah, you're down to fifty-two. Do you want to add that? Surf, like, uh, surf and turf at the pool, steak and lobster. I'm down. Two? <laughs> see if you got anything else in any of these other lines to borrow or add. It. So that brings the materials up to 297. Mm -hmm. Capital, six year. Pool liners, 40. Miscellaneous is 1,000. I got 3,000 left. And I'm down to Um without a transfer until we get our budget stuff. It don't look to me it's going to be better. But I got most of these are, are real, so I don't have a lot of wiggle room. Does this look good to start out with, increasing your concession and your wages? Yeah. Okay. So we're looking at that, you know, 3,000 left? Yeah. 272. Yeah. We're, we're in the box. And this went up to 50 again. How much concession? Two, seventeen. Mm -hmm. If we're giving a fifteen, it's turned down to thirty-two. That's a fifty percent. That good. Any other questions for people? We'll try to sustain the thought of things and have eighty thousand for the line. So I said, as I think the second to last meeting, April, you've done phenomenal with that pool. Um, Mike, I know you had it, but mostly it's April. It's not taking anything away from what you put in. But no. April, thank you so much because you took in that pool from next to nothing to it being profitable. If you had asked me that three or four years ago, we probably wouldn't do it. So whatever you're doing, thank you. Yeah, big nod. Seriously, I mean, big nod when it comes to high school kids. They're, they're some good kids. It's not about what we do. It's about what she does and who she brings into that pool. She responsible for the culture it goes it says a lot about you and how you manage that pool than anything so we appreciate that the city appreciates you you're welcome sir sure. uh, mr kicko how much is that pool line going to be i know two years ago i thought we had a price of ninety two thousand on it it, it, I'm sure it's going up in two years. Well, that's what I said it, right before we started. I have, uh, have a request in for an update because of supply chain issues and price of materials. So I'm just still waiting to hear back. So, are you planning on putting that line in 22? Or are you going to hold it up for 23? Uh, I'm assuming it, it, it'll probably just depend on what the price coming back is. It, it, it all depends right now. What am I doing? <laughs> Just say yes. I might own oh, money. I don't care where it's money. But anyway, my money. I'm out of it, right? 
I'm, I'm sure if it comes down to it and we need to pull some money out, we'll talk, it'd be council's decision. We'll just give them the information and they can make the determination how they want to move forward. But you have, you can't, you can't sit there and see the history of the pool and see what it's done in the past three to four years. And be like, you have to, if it was still losing money year in and year out, but it's actually starting to go in the right direction. So it may be worth the investment to see how long that holds up. To be honest with you, but we don't know until we have the. I agree. Yeah. I mean, the as that mm -hmm. water, so it needs that line up. Sure. The, uh, Whatever you did Whatever. there this year, holy moly! I think it was it was some. Um, we fixed a few minor things but from whatever sun panel people are using today. We did a lot of that. Well, you had that guy from I don't know who it was. I wasn't there. He, I think he went in after it was already filled. And did something? Oh yeah, we had the fire chief from Bethel come in. He's a diver, and God, it was a mess on him but he did and maybe it worked it just didn't look like it worked when he installed it but because after you did it the pool started overflowing it remember? did it because did it, I, I apologize i forgot all about that no i don't mean in a negative way no no I mean, but that's i forgot a great all, problem in my opinion <laughs> no i forgot all about it overflowing and we had to actually drain water yeah, yeah and, and, i forgot all about that so we don't need the line and but normally, <laughs> and normally at the end of the year when they shut the pump off, that water, you go by a day later when they shut the pump off, it's down this far. This year it stayed uh, pretty much right where it was for a week. I don't know what happened. There's still a lot of cracks, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm glad you said that because that guy had called and said, hey, we were worried about mosquitoes. And just for past years, it's one of those things you drive by it all the time. It's always empty. Yeah. And it was. It just kept holding the water. Yeah. Good problem. Okay. If no other questions for the poll, we'll move on to the cemetery. So before she gets into this, sorry to interrupt you, when we were going over the budget, the cemetery um, was going to need about a $50,000 transfer from the general fund. So um, during further analysis, we realized that in the CIP, we ended up trucking there. Uh, for uh, 60 or 80. 80. 80. Um, so when we're going through the budgetary with Howie and his department, um, we did ask Howie if they can hold off on that dump truck for a year or two. He said he could, so we did go do, uh, did take that out so the cemetery balance would actually have a positive balance. If not, council wants that dump truck back in, we are going to have to have a 60000 uh, rather hefty transfer in from the general fund to support the cemetery. So, um, I'll you know, leave it up to council. If you guys want to go ahead and take that dump truck out, I'll go ahead and get legislation drafted by attorney for that to be included on Mondays. Um, not Mondays, I'm sorry, the first week that we introduce the budget, we can introduce a resolution to amend the CIP. Mm -hmm. um, if, if it needed a dump truck ASAP, that's one thing, but since it can't hold off for a couple of years, I think that's probably the best one to go. But also, it's council. How many can add us to that? Well, no, as I say, yeah, we can get through, um, and also I'll be doing a rate review again of the cemetery for 2022. With the additions that we have put in in the last couple of years, our fleet is starting to look a little better. Mm -hmm. What is the age on that dump truck down there now? Uh, it's 21. It's 21 years old. Oh, I think that's a 2021. <laughs> oh, oh. Like, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, no, it's What'd you 21, do to it? <laughs> but it rarely leaves that area. It doesn't go out and plow uh, snow like it did in its first five years. It r really pretty much just stays on the cemetery grounds and comes out rarely on occasion. All right, let me ask another dumb question. I know our regular street dump truck is getting on its last legs am i correct um our big uh, the 550 is in a similar situation we i think we have it in the cip here in the future our big medium-sized dump truck is still in in great shape the big plow truck the one that we have is our big small truck well my first thought is if we've got the money let's replace it you know next year god forbid something would happen well, I guess I'm looking at the fact that if you've got a unit 21 years old, if we would happen to need it, because 
from what I understand, we're going to have a pretty rough winter, according to the almanacs and some of the forecasts. I don't know that even if we order it now, yeah, it won't be we wouldn't get it. Um, right now, Dodge is not even offering us a new vehicle in a meeting I had a week ago. They're not doing government sales. They're on hold for a short, for a short minute. What about Chevy or Ford? Um, I haven't talked to those guys uh, on the state, but they're all having that issue where um, they have told their government reps to kind of hold back right now, and they're looking at more um, trying to fulfill some of the private because the fleet, you know, they're they're saying we got to get some of those out, but fleet they're getting 20 trucks at a time. They're like, well, we can't give a agency 20 and not give someone else out here a truck. How often is that truck driven? I mean, how much? I mean, daily. It, I mean, it, how, many, how many hours do they use it a week or? Uh, just only when they dig a grave is the only time it gets it gets run. Okay. Oh, that's an F three fifty, so it's a one ton dump. What does council feel about the city owning that? I was gonna. We hate it. I. Yeah, we do too. That I was. <laughs> we do too. Can we, I mean, you asked me. Yeah. So we can't get in much because it, I mean, it does talk about budget. So that's that. Maybe it's one of the next meetings. Maybe I next year or something. I'd love to discuss that, that because it is. We it's a drink. have to do a lot to operate something that continually is just not fun. To do. Right. Well, my question is, if we are not going to operate that cemetery, what are we going to do with it? I don't think you're going to have a very never know. long look list of buyers. Never know what to look at. It hurt to ask. Never hurt to ask. <clears throat> at the end of the day, it's a business for someone who specializes in cemeteries. cemeteries. Yeah. But. Well, looking at what Inglewood has run into over there yeah. with uh, the one west of Inglewood, the one west of Trotwood on 35, and from what I'm hearing from the state, on cemeteries, it's not a pleasant uh, discussion. It's not. It's a it's a unique operation down there for sure. How many acres do you have to grow? Uh, we have five that are, that is not um, plotted yet, or we just started in a portion of it. But we have five. It's that lower part in behind RD holder. But after we after we use that five, we are we we would go into using perpetual care to maintain it. It would then shut down and. Okay. You would use what perpetual care you have to, and you wouldn't be getting it mowed weekly. Yeah. Did you or Mr. Cobb have something? No, I thought I saw your hand up. Oh, so does council, do we come to the cleaning of the dump truck? I would say yes. I, I I recommend it. I mean, we easily got a year or two. It's not falling to the ground. Well, with the standpoint, the fact we we be a year out getting it, we're not going to gain anything by ordering one. Hopefully, the market turns in a year. It has heat, right? It's got heat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah. And a floorboard. And a floorboard. Yeah. We can laugh at it now. Yeah, we can. That was two years ago. <laughs> we can laugh at it now. Hold on, I'm going to draft the motion here. It's not earlier really the DeLorean over on the Yeah, I heard it. <laughs> Put a dump body on it. Huh? Put a dump body on it. Okay, so I'm going to ask for a motion to have the city manager draft legislation to remove the duck truck from the cemetery CIP. So moved. Second. Mr. Vice Mayor with motion, and we'll go with Mr. Roadwall as your second. Mayor Lowry. What? Oh, yes. I thought you were like asking a question. Other no, than when I see him, I got to start the vote, but I think I, got I thought to... you didn't hear what I had said. That's why. Sorry. Just, uh, sorry, I misled you with my pin cap. Um, Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilwoman Eagleston. Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yeah. And May uh, uh, Councilman Roadwald? Yes. And then 
Vice Mayor Clinton. Yes. Love being with the council. No, you don't. No, wait, I do. It's very confusing. Okay, so that motion passes 6 to 0, and thank you. All right. Okay, moving on from the cemetery. Waterworks Capital Improvement. That is um, where we were tentatively wanting to take 15,000 out of the water operating and put in the water treatment upgrade. And if the capital improvement is just an account that holds it. Um, also, 7% of the consumer charges go in here for a total of 20,000. Let's try to bump it up a little bit. Expenditures, there's 3,500 in a capital purchase, which leaves a um, fund balance in at 36,000. Waterworks capital improvement. Any questions on? Next one is wastewater capital improvement. And I don't think there's anything in past right through there. There's nothing on that one. It just has a balance in the fund. Cemetery perpetual care. Sale of lots. We trans um, thousand dollars goes in. So the portion of our lots go into the perpetual care and a little bit of our interest from our investments by um, auditor rules go in there for twelve hundred dollars estimated revenue. Operational supplies, the flowers that they get every year for a thousand dollars expense. And the fund balance is a little over almost one hundred fifty-one thousand dollars in the perpetual care. Any questions on that one? Street lighting. Street lighting assessments coming at ninety-eight thousand for our revenue. Expenditures are the cost to light the streets and the auditor fees. Hundred three thousand eight hundred. Fund balance usually stays pretty low. We use up about what we have, fifty thousand. Uh, any questions on street lighting assessments? Government center. Twenty five thousand dollars. Oh, sorry. Far um, with us switching over to LEDs, do you think that's going to impact the uh, street light cost? No, when he came up and he did it, I thought so too, but it really was minor, to be honest with you. I don't have the number off of my head, but it was. I was shocked too, but it wasn't, it wasn't too much of a savings. I think he plugged some of his installation costs, offset some of the savings for a little while. Yeah. Okay. They did, they, we only paid 10000 for that? Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. It, it, I mean, it's so much better. I mean, yeah, we've yeah. got a lot of positive feedback. Right, wow. just, just open maybe. When I first put them in, it was like, wow. Government Center. Transfer in revenue source twenty five thousand from the general fund. This is hold in this account. Since there are no expenditures, it carried over a dollar somewhat way down years ago there was a dollar in that account, so that brought over. This year we put twenty five thousand. We're um, asking to put another twenty five for this year, we'll bring uh, fifty thousand dollars in that fund balance. Awesome. <laughs> Wastewater equipment replacement. This is a capital fund. A portion of our tap in fees go in, 6500 And there is equipment rehabilitation at the wastewater for 10000 And that would use up that revenue coming in. Any questions on that capital? We're just down to the little ones now. I think that might be it. Yep, that's our balance. We went through it all, so entertain any other questions. Um did you was there something to go over when I asked about the extra street? I mean, I know you said you addressed that the street lights and new poles, extras. Oh yeah, so we did put extra money in as you saw that thirty one thousand. Um the light at CVS should be put up within the next couple of weeks. Uh, capital will be out one of our spares the other spare will go up in front of Abe's hidden treasures so we'll be out of spares and then now we'll be about 16 plus weeks out on getting the, the other two and spares yes so we're gonna order maybe what maybe four or five yeah there'll be two replacements everything will be in so in about 20 weeks <laughs> it seems like forever uh, we will be sitting at two spares and everything installed as long as nothing else happens oh yeah as long as nothing else happens <laughs> All right. 
Awesome. Hey. You know how quick it happens, too. All right. Council, any questions for Ms. Harris, Mr. Bridge, or the rest of the crew? And we're all open ears. I don't know if you guys ever think about positions you want to add to come talk to us. So when I was talking about it earlier, you, Mr. Cobb, and you, Mr. Mayor, I'm just, we're just trying to move our form of government the way it operates. I don't want to come across as negative or anything, but we are aware we need those positions. As long as we get that budgeted for it, we'll get with Howie and find out what those are. So just to clear that up, those day-to-day -day positions we'll take care of. Um, we're just trying to get move it to the city into a direction where our form of government is. You guys are always been great to work with, um, but we don't want to earmark ourselves to say it's going to be this position because the needs may change. But as long as we have the money there that you guys approve, we're, we're probably going to hire for it. Any, uh, any applications for the soon to be opened? Uh... I have nothing to do with that position, but yeah, I'm sure we have some time. We're going to do start tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other discussion? Uh, just a big thank you to Ms. Harris, Mr. Bridge, Mr. Kicko, Mr. Hutchinson, Mr. Chief, thank you. You guys are awesome. Yep. Oh. Motion to adjourn. Back. Did you have something else, Randy, before he motions? No, no. I remember I was clerk. I got to do this. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Roadwall, second by Ms. Eggleston for adjournment. Yes. <laughs> Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Rowe? Councilman Cook? Cobb? Yeah. Uh, Councilman Rodewald? Yes. And Councilwoman Eagleston? Yes. We are adjourned at 442. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you.